Yeah. We are Lauren and Chris, and two years ago, we made the crazy decision to buy a sailboat and sail around the world. This is our story so far. So, who are we? I'm Chris, and I have always had the dream of living an alternative lifestyle on a sailing boat. And I'm Lauren, and I've always had the idea of living an alternative lifestyle. I didn't think boats were quite within my reach, but yeah, you've changed my mind on that one, so here we are. So I was working the nine to five, living in central London, and COVID hit. Got a massive reality check and thought that idea of sailing around the world on a sailboat needs to happen sooner rather than later. Yeah, no longer wanted to be part of the rat race and the nine to five definitely shifted our priorities. So we thought, how can we do this? How can we still work, earn money, but shift away from that structured society and sort of create our own little yeah life and reality that's a bit more alternative and lets us live a bit more freely. So we met in December 2019 whilst backpacking through Southeast Asia. We came back to the UK pretty much straight into a global pandemic. So we decided we wanted to be together and Lauren decided she wanted to go along with this uh, crazy idea of living on a boat and sailing around the world. Chris wanted to do his skipper's course in Gibraltar and had looked at this already and obviously told me the idea and I was like, yes, please sign me up. So we booked our tickets, September 2020, found a little wiggle room in between COVID restrictions and everything else and did a 10 day intensive novice today skipper's course. Sailed around Gibraltar and Spain, which was absolutely incredible. And it was really good for us to kind of see if we could yeah, be on a sailboat for 10 days, no one got really seasick, and we learned, yeah, all the basics. Yeah, it taught us if we could or couldn't live in that sort of small space and survive, really, because it's, yeah, it's a minimalist lifestyle and it might seem like the dream from the outset, but if you haven't done it and you've not put yourself into that position, then there's no way of really telling if it's for you or not. Can you afford to do a Novice Today Skipper course or not? That's the next thing. We did save up some money and make sure that we had enough to go and do it because I think we found that that would be the most important thing for us to do, first of all. So it's not cheap. I think there's not much price difference in doing it in Gibraltar or doing it wherever you live. So don't get caught up on flying out to somewhere sunny. So here in the UK, we were put on furlough. So Chris and I both furloughed for a few months. So we took the opportunity to do our theory part of the skipper's course online. So yeah, 10 days in Gibraltar awaited after we did our theory online. That was with a sailing school called Jolly Parrot, who were great and we would highly recommend them. We'll link them below because they were amazing. So we completed the course and we decided we liked it. So we needed a boat. What were we looking for? So the criteria for a sailing boat that you want to sail around the world. We needed something that we could comfortably live on. We needed something that would be capable of sailing around the world. We wanted something that was safe and something that was small enough for us to handle comfortably. So the search began. So we looked at quite a few different boats, I think maybe five or six or something. Yeah. All in different places, some in Southampton, some in Brighton, yeah. some... Norfolk. Uh, <laughs> Norfolk, yes, Norfolk. So we looked at a few. One had very rusty keel belt bolts. Yeah. Uh, really. One just looked really old and a bit, a little bit small for us, I think. And then we found Indiana. We went to Norfolk and had a visit. The layout, everything inside is really, really cool and just what you'd want out of the liverboard. So that ticked a lot of boxes too. Not really know much else about boats. We sort of thought, yeah, this is great. Um, looks, oh, yeah. looks lovely and- um, We loved it straight yeah, away. Take our money. <laughs> yeah, like I think we both just like looked at each other when we first came on and we were like, yeah, this is definitely the one. Rose tinted glasses, but yeah. Yeah, bit of naivety and um, off we went. So Indiana is a 1989 Gypsy 372, which is the master version, which has the big aft cabin instead of two separate um, single cabins. So we bought the boat and the adventure began. She obviously was in Norfolk, on the Norfolk Broads, so we decided we wanted to take her to Brighton. We like Brighton Marina, so how were we going to get her down there? A lot of people thought we could maybe got a skipper and sail it around, but the boat was not ready in Norway. So well, the best bet was putting her on the back of a lorry. So the rigging wasn't in a good state or enough to get her sailing. It was right up the broads and you'd have had to have gone through a few bridges and taken her down a long river to get out to the open ocean which we weren't really experienced enough to be doing, I think, just having got our day skipper course 10 days on a sailing boat. We made the right decision 
and it was yeah to get Indiana on the back of a lorry and transport her down to Brighton. We got her down to Brighton and from there we thought we would get her back in the water, put the mask back up and would be out sailing around the globe. In no time. In no time. <laughs> Little did we know we should have had a rigging inspection so when it came time to put the mast up it then raised some issues that our rigging was really not up to par. Then the checkbook came out. <laughs> it wasn't something we were factoring in when we bought the boat. And nope. um, yeah, just how expensive boat life can be, even with the boat out of the water. Running rigging, standing rigging, everything that makes the mast go up and makes the sails come out. It's... Um, Key things you need on a sailboat, really. Yeah, the things, the important stuff that's, that are going to get you... A to B, um, you know, around the globe. We spent a lot of money on rigging and getting the boat back to a serviceable position where we could take it safely anywhere. So quick timeline. We bought the boat in November 2020. She was taken to Brighton in February 2021 and we did not sail her until July 2021. Yeah, not quite how we envisioned the start of this no. wonderful journey. It's not been quite the smooth sailing, picturesque, romantic dream that we probably envisioned, but we've learned a hell of a lot and we've got a lot more experience than we ever had with the boat. So what have been the main hurdles for boat life? The rigging, as we've just discussed, was the biggest hurdle for us. And then we got dropped back in the water and realised quickly that we also had some engine issues to resolve. So we had a bent comrade that needed to not be bent, so <laughs> we um, had to take the engine out of the engine bay, uh, put it on its side, get underneath it, take the rod out, replace the rod, put it all back together again. Also skimming the cylinder head, lapping valves and all sorts of stuff like that. Not something we'd ever, ever had to do before and hopefully not something we have to do again but we had pretty much run out of money from all of the rigging issues. So we decided to have a go at the engine stuff ourselves. With the very helpful guy who we met yeah. through Instagram, who Guy has literally been our like knight in shining armour through all of this. So yeah. massive thank you um, to Guy for helping us through, yeah, all the engine issues and boat issues and late night phone calls. So everything. Yeah, you're the best. Thank you. So we started filming our videos that we're putting across to you now. And we started an Instagram account and documented our journey. And in doing that, we have met some amazing people, some incredible people that have given us a lot of advice, a lot of help. Through messages, yeah. through phone calls. Like, yeah, it's just so overwhelming um, to have this little community and little boat family. Everyone going through very similar things to you. Yeah. Everyone very willing to just, yeah, give advice, help, or just listen to you when you're, yeah, having a bit of a... Moment. A moment, yeah. Because <laughs> it can be very overwhelming. It's not all romantic and, yeah, sort of smooth sailing. There are yeah. definitely ups and downs of boat life. But I think the one thing the whole way through, we've always just gone with it. And even when it is a bit tough, we just it still feels really right to us. So we know this is what we want. All the ups and downs and the hurdles are definitely worth it for us. So we can actually hit the goal that we've been aiming for for the last three years now. So after that, we wanted to get out sailing as much as we could. So we planned a trip to the Solent. So we sailed from Brighton to Gosport, from Gosport to Bewley, from Bewley to Lymington, Lymington to Cowes, Cows to Chichester and then Chichester back to Brighton, yeah. which was quite the ordeal. Look at one of our older videos, you'll see what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we learned an incredible amount. Sailing around the Solent is one of the most challenging areas to sail, probably in the world. And we were out there doing it on our own and going from place to place, going into different marinas, going to anchorages and putting the boat through its paces and putting ourselves through our paces, which we needed to do. We need to stretch our legs, so to speak. And yeah, get out of our comfort zone a little bit, I think, yeah. as well. So. Push it, yeah. So yeah. we um, yeah, we had the most incredible summer and that was the end of summer 2021. Yeah. And we thought, yep, let's keep these wheels turning and what can we do next? After we came back from the Solent, we came back to an engine bilge with about six litres of water in it, realised yeah. we had some more engine issues and, yeah, you had to get to work and take the engine out again and 
yeah there's a whole saga of our engine which is on our youtube channel which you are free to go back and look at yeah it goes on for a while so the 2022 sailing season started but there's not much you can really do around Brighton other than go out and go up and down for a little bit. But we did that and we, we got out and we took friends out, we took family out and we enjoyed ourselves. Most weekends we would take the boat out and make sure that we were keeping active and keep keeping our skills up. We planned a trip to Eastbourne, which was going to be quite a challenge because you had to go around um, Beachy Head, which is a sort of big headland and... Um, yeah, conditions weren't ideal for us. And, and um, yeah, we, we learned how to sail in some um, heavier weather with some bigger swell. So that was actually quite an experience for us, even though it wasn't maybe the, the most perfect um, of, of sailing conditions that we should have been out in at that time. So in the background to all of this sailing, knowledge building and mile building, we were trying to get our lives in order in terms of our jobs and everything else that would allow us to go on this sailing adventure around the world. So we didn't want to just buy the boat, set off and say goodbye to everything that we'd built that, to that point. We wanted to make it sustainable. We wanted to make sure we could continue to work in terms of get an income that would allow us to make our sailing dreams sustainable. So that meant getting remote working jobs, basically. So one of the positives of COVID, if there are any, was that it kind of pushed the whole working remotely and working from home idea yeah. forward for employers so and employees. So yeah, both of us now have remote jobs, which meant we could actually take the boat further afield. And with that, we got our remote working jobs. Well, I think I was you, you got yours and then I got mine the 1st of September. 2022 and on the same day maybe the next Pretty day much, yeah. we um yeah we set sail and undertook our our longest passage ever to sail from brighton to falmouth so this has been a huge deal for us it's our longest passage we had lots of firsts we had like overnight sails we saw some dolphins it was just absolutely incredible and we're so proud of ourselves and just can't believe we actually made it to this point. It doesn't look like a long sort of distance, but for us, yeah, it is just incredible that we've managed to accomplish this. So now it's just like, what's next? And yeah. what can we do now? Because if we've been able to accomplish this, then we know that we, we're, yeah, we're yeah. good. It's really started off that like, the spark of adventure that yeah. we've we've had fits and starts over the last two years. Points that we've said, you know, this is, this is, we're really living it now. I think that was day one for us where we left the safety of our, marina in brighton and we've come out <laughs> and sailed 250 nautical miles down the south coast of the uk to the very tip and um it's um it's a real game changer so what we didn't know then that we do know now is that we are not going to go back no we are staying in falmouth so we left at the end of the season really from brighton because as i said the remote job status needed to be secured. We got to Falmouth and then really the weather turned and it's been non-stop wind and now it's ice and... <laughs> oh yeah, now it's just proper British winter and weather and yeah, we're not going anywhere we're for not, a little we're, while. We are about to get lifted out of the water and put on the hard for a month and we're going to get some critical jobs done to the boat here. But that means then that we are here for the winter and then we're going to plan the Great Escape, the proper Great Escape. The Great Escape. From spring, or whenever the weather allows it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So we've been talking about how we're going to circumnavigate the world, and that is the plan. So to start that plan, we are going to head south. We're going to go down to the Balearic Islands, I think, for the summer. That's off the east coast of Spain. But that's going to be our kind of stretching our legs and getting the boat abroad getting ourselves abroad and setting ourselves up and seeing what it's all about from there we're going to go down to the canary islands or probably as far as cape verde that's going to be where we start our first ocean crossing and that's going to be at the end of next year we're hoping we're going to cross the atlantic ocean and then we'll be in probably st lucia or somewhere like that and yeah spend a season sailing around the islands there and maybe even two seasons, we'll see how much of it we get to see and how far we get to go before hurricane season. And then we'll, we'll see, we either hide out, do another season, or we continue and we go through the Panama Canal and then we're in the Pacific Ocean. And we'll cross the Pacific Ocean, but first we'll probably go to Galapagos, we might go to Hawaii, 
and then we'll probably go to either Indonesia or we'll go to New Zealand, Australia. And then we've got another ocean to cross, which is the Indian Ocean, and we'll cross that and go to Madagascar, we'll go to South Africa. Yeah, from there we'll come back up to where we started in Cape Verde. That's the plan. That's the plan. Stick around and see how far we go. So this has been our 2022 roundup. Thank you all so much for watching, thank you so much for your support, and here's to an amazing 2023. Indiana Round. We